Hi there, I'm Anne Marie Green. I'm Vladimir Dutier. The roller coaster ride continues on Wall Street today. Here's a live look at the big board. You can see the market down almost 2%, 500 points. This is after a big swing upwards yesterday. Stocks uh, took a tumble this morning when the bond market flashed a warning signal. Wall Street's so-called fear index spiked double digits, causing many to worry of a possible recession in the near future. So joining me now on the phone to explain what all of this means is uh, Melissa Armo. She is the founder and owner of the stock swoosh. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been uh, watching this really over the past hour or so, and it continues to, to fall. Yeah. I'm sort of surprised. So, Melissa, break down what investors are looking at here and why they're so concerned. Yes, thanks for having me. I think that yesterday was an anomaly because the market had that big rally uh, when Trump tweeted and they came out that they were going to push some of the tariffs back for big companies like Apple to December 15th. And, and then people bought into the market. But that was a terrible idea, in my opinion, because we've been looking lower really ever since the Fed lowered weight rates about two weeks ago. And you said, well, how, how could we have fallen since the Fed lowered rates? Well, I think it was built into the market that it was an expectation the Fed was going to lower rates. But the biggest thing that's been weighing in the market and it's going to continue to weigh in the market is a tariff war with China. And people say it's not a tariff war. It is a tariff war. This is going to go on and on. And even though they're going to have talks in two weeks, I would be shocked if anything happens at all that to resolve this issue in 2019, which means it's going to go into 2020. And as you know, it's an election year. And I don't think China is going to deal with Trump then, just in the case that maybe they think he may not get elected. So just um, uh, walk our viewers through how significant uh, the economic indicators are that we may be on the verge of a recession. Uh, help put into context what this inverted yield means for people who may not be market savvy. Again, if you're not, if you're not really into watching the yield curve, it really doesn't have a lot of meaning to you. But long story short, uh, there's a difference between short-term rates and long-term rates. And as I said, the Fed lowered rates about you know, two and a half weeks ago. But the thing is, right now, people are worried. They're worried that we're going to go into a recession. So people that are in the market, that are long in the market, and remember, if people are long in the market, going back you know, to 2016 or even past that, people are up. So this is profit-taking. This is profit-taking you're seeing back from the sell-off that we had at the end of uh, uh, August. But as far as market people, when they look at the at the rates, uh, people are worried. But I think the Fed is going to step in and prevent us from going into recession. I don't. I don't think that we're necessarily going to go into recession. I don't give that yield curve of all the credence that everybody in the world does because we have the Fed. So the Fed is going to try to prevent that from happening. Remember last year at the end of the year in December, they ended up raising rates and the market fell. They adjusted it then, like I said, this year. Now they've dropped rates. So the Fed is going to step in and do their job to try to control things. But that has nothing to do with what's going on right now with tariffs. You know what I'm saying? So as far as that goes, that's what the concern is. And that's what the worry is for many companies. Because a lot of companies, now just listen to me, a lot of, and many people may not know this, but a lot of U.S. companies, they're U.S. companies, okay, they manufacture their products and goods in China. So they have plants over there. And that is one of the things Trump's been trying to do, why he, why he's instigated this whole thing, is because he's saying, wait a minute, people should be giving jobs to Americans and having plants, more plants in America for American workers, because you don't have to pay the same people what you pay the hourly rate, the minimum wage in China. It's not the same thing here. And you don't have to pay unemployment and, and all the other things you have to pay in the United States for fair labor laws, you don't have to pay people in China. So there's many, 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 many companies that manufacture goods in China because it's cheaper. It's even cheaper now with the tariffs. Like I went into the store the other day, Bed Bath & Beyond, up on, up on Broadway. I wanted to compare to see if the prices with the tariffs had gone up with just simple products that I wanted to buy. I couldn't find one thing to compare because guess what? Everything I picked up and wanted to buy was made in China, even though they were U.S. companies. This has been going on for 40 years since China exploded as a manufacturing giant, and now they're the second largest economy in the world. But I'm, I'm, I'm not a big believer in that yield curve that is do or die or, or doomsday. I don't think people should worry about that. That is why the market's falling right now. But to me, the market overall has been looking heavy because of more so about the tariffs. I think the Fed will help come in and control what's going on to prevent a recession with interest rates. But overall, I would not ha tell people to buy back right here into the market right now until this situation gets 
resolved, and I'm not sure if it gets resolved anytime soon. Well, Melissa, you gave us a bit of a, a silver lining, at least, uh, with your sort of confidence uh, in the Fed stepping in, which is good news. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. This trade war doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. It's not resolving itself. The president attempted to sort of, um, uh, I guess, um, uh, have some control by delaying the implementation of new tariffs. But he said he was going to do it, and as as we know, yep. right, as far as we know right now, they're supposed to sort of kick in by mid December. I don't know how it would look if the president backed down. So, you know, part of the reason why all those goods are being made in China is because we as Americans don't want to pay, you know, twice the price exactly. or a third the price for our 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 iPhone. So, you know, can we anticipate anything changing as we move forward? But I mean, that's the thing. Then the companies can can absorb the cost. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't have it both ways, eat your cake and have it too. They've been saving money by not paying U.S. workers all these years. So then, guess what? They can cover the cost of the tariffs instead of raising the prices for us until this gets resolved. I mean, that's my two cents on it. And you got to remember, corporations got the tax cut savings too. So they got that wonderful tax cut, which is great. I mean, I'm a company too. Um, but, the, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't employ people in China. <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they, they're saving so much money by employing people in China and then trying to do something with their currency where they devalue their currency. And that happened two weeks ago, and that created a sell-off in the market. So that actually it's going to cost less now for what you would pay as a company. What you pay a Chinese work on U.S. dollars is going to cost less for the American companies because China did that to try to fight back with the trade war. But as far as the December 15th date or any date that Trump says, the 1st, the 15th, this, that, the other thing, I mean, he could tweet something as soon as he hangs up her phone and change his mind. So I don't have 100 percent conviction right now that people should be buying back in the market. I don't have 100 percent conviction that any of these dates are solid, firm dates like a rock. I think that things are changing. I think if you're long term invested in the market for your 401k, the market, I believe, holds the uptrend. But it, and if you're an active trader, you can make a lot of money if you know how to play the move. But if you're somebody that's a regular person and you're retired and you're living off your retirement, you might want to sit down and meet with your financial advisor because you might want to consider moving some of your money into some of these other things. Right now, you can get a savings account with like a 2% rate. We're falling right now. We're falling right now as I'm talking to you. We're going to fall probably, and we're going to have a big move down today. I think it's going to happen. I'm watching the charts right now. We're going to keep falling. Yeah, wow. no, that's what it feels right like. <laughs> it feels yeah. like uh, yeah. we, this is not over yet. Uh, the bloodletting uh, will continue um, on the yeah. street. Uh, Melissa, always great to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.